Hello, and welcome back to Locusts and Wild Honey, the preaching ministry of Birth of the Baptist Orthodox Church in Pinckney, Michigan. I'm Father Methodius Kvastek, priest and rector of this community. I hope you will find the materials here to be spiritually beneficial. Thank you for joining me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Congratulations to all. Sprasnikum. Welcome. Welcome to our visiting guests. It is a great honor to have you with us. Uh, One of you has been here before, but the others have not. So with our open hearts, we welcome you. It It is our pleasure to have you. The great feast that we celebrate today, great feast, I want everyone to understand that the great feasts of the church are the absolutely most important things for us. That if we believe that we're going to meet with God, and if we believe that God will be merciful to us, we talked about this last night a little bit, statistically speaking, we have our best chance in the church. And the great feasts are screaming out to us. They're like, they're like roadblocks in front of a cliff. Forgive me, I, I, I'm at a loss for a metaphor. It's like a roadblock at the edge of a cliff saying, do not pass. And we don't even pay attention to them. And we just, we just hurry by. And then they're in our past. And all of the grace and all of the help And all of the blessings that God has for us as children are squandered by many. And I'm, I'm not preaching to the choir right now, and forgive me. I trust that God will give us, even though we've given him only just a little bit, that he'll give us so much more. But it must be said that the great feasts of the church are not negotiable. They're not optional. And if your life, whoever's listening to this, if your life does not allow for you to celebrate them. Protestantism exists. Go there. This is not a joke. We're not messing around in the church. We need to be saved. We need salvation. We need the merciful attention of God. And this is the place he's decided to concentrate that for us. The great feast that we celebrate today, the protection of the Most Holy Mother of God, Pokrov, is a celebration of the Greek people. But I've spoken with some Greek people lately, and I think I mentioned this last year, that it's not on their radar really as much. But the Russian people, the Slavic people, for the Slavic people, this is a great feast. And I won't get into necessarily how that developed. And I want to talk about something that we may miss as we celebrate this feast and, and as always, I want us to find something new and fresh in it that we didn't make up, that's there, but we've just overlooked. And in order to do that, I was meditating last night about these holy fools, St. Andrew and his disciple Epiphanios. You might ask, Father Methodius, we understand if holy elders have disciples, Right? They're grooming these people, they're teaching them, they're teaching them the spiritual life, they're teaching them the inner warfare, they're teaching them church services. Even, even people who are not holy, but people who are great liturgists, they have disciples in the churches and they follow them around with books and they say, oh, Father, where does this go and how, how do I do this? So there's even, there's even that aspect. But a holy fool? What is a holy fool, by the way? I think this is this is worth our consideration. And maybe maybe most of you know this, but maybe it's worth at least revisiting. All of us are born with the powers of the soul, noose, word, and spirit. Each of us is born with those powers. And quickly, whether through uh, genetics, through s- simple biology, through chemicals, through influences that are uh, psychological, through uh, trauma, through many different influences, those powers quickly become darkened. And it's very few uh, children who are born whose parents, godparents, priests, grandparents, if they're pious, 
have the prescience and have the faith to say that this child born was born with its spiritual powers, its noetic powers intact. And very few people invest themselves in saying the only thing that is important for us as we relate to this child is to ensure that those powers remain intact and pure and clear. And very few people think that way. And they say, oh, you know, it's fine. We, we, did, we did everything that we, that we believe that we should have done. And now it's just time to kick back and relax and watch a movie. All your work gone. I'm not saying that there are no good movies to watch, but you understand. You understand that we, we say that we believe these things about our children, and we do very little to prove that we believe it. So, parents, take note. But as those, as those uh, powers of the soul, they're called, as they start to deteriorate, as they start to become darkened, sometimes in his mercy— the Lord, oftentimes, you, you know that as you come to the church, it's a process. And we've talked about the tree. Remember, the, the tree wouldn't bear any fruit until the rocks were tied to its branches. And then as the branches all started to be weighed down by the rocks, and they finally, finally the branches bowed down to the ground, and then it could begin to bear fruit. And that's the way most of us are. We're like trees that bear no fruit, and then the evangelists come and they tie the strings to our branches, and then the Holy Fathers help us to understand what the evangelists were saying, and they, put, they add weight to those strings, and then the branches start to bow low to the ground, and then we start to bear fruit. And in that way, the powers of our soul are purified, corrected, and enabled to work properly. When they don't, what are they called? They're called corrupted, right? They're corrupt. So then they're enabled to work properly. And, but for some people, that process is bypassed, and it ends up making them stand out. And so the Almighty God, the All-Merciful Lord, takes the powers of the soul and just snaps them back into place. And then these people know only one thing. They only know God they, know, they only know his mercy, and then they become very acutely sensitive to their own sins and to the sins of the world. And the way that they relate to the other people in the world is tantamount to lunacy, people think. These people are, are fools. But some people know that this process takes place, and then they say, God has done a work in this person, and we need to listen to what he or she says and we need to watch what he or she does, because not only are, are prophecies words, sometimes they're actions. And so the holy fool sees what we cannot see, knows what we do not know, but from our perspective, what's going on with this person, right? They wear uh, the wrong clothes, they stand the wrong way in the temple, or they, they walk around in the streets saying and doing strange things. But, but people who are sensitive to this process, they know. They know what a holy fool is. Blagenia, the blessed. The, the church, the, church and the Russian church calls them the blessed ones. <clears throat> There's another kind of foolishness that is put on. And there are two ways that this can be understood. The one is sinful. The one is sinful. And its intention is to attract attention. But the other way is virtuous, and its intention is to, is to deflect attention. To deflect attention from what? To the fact that that process I described earlier where the, the boughs are, are, are being uh, uh, bent down to the earth, to distract attention to the fact that that process has taken place already. Okay, do you understand? Did I, maybe I didn't make that very clear. Most of us, it takes a long time for us to be corrected in the church. Some people, it doesn't take that much time. And those people are not fools. But because people will find out that it's taken place, they put on foolishness, right? To trick them, to deceive them. And that's virtuous. And you've read about many of them. They're, they were fools for Christ's sake. 
And there were, those, there were those who put on foolishness. And they did it because they were already saints, and they just didn't want to attract too much negative attention. And in the church, negative attention often comes as positive attention. Okay? And it's a temptation. So... We have all right. So that's the that's the framework that we're that we're viewing this feast with the holy fool, and the holy fools. You'll notice Andrew, and Epiphanios, his disciple. To my mind, every time I say that, it's so strange. The fool has a disciple. Uh, we ask where where is the wisdom of the world? Who is the wise man? The wise man of this world, by the way, is not at the feast today. The wise man of this world, he's out chasing the dollar. The wise man of this world, he's out, he's um, resting from his labors. The wise man of this world, he is distracted by many things. We read Martha and Mary, right, in the gospel. He's distracted by many things. And he can't be bothered to come to the church because of his wisdom, because of his grand education, because of his knowledge, his vast knowledge on many issues. He knows that it's best for him to do whatever else he needs to do with his time. But the holy fools are in the church. And the holy fools see heaven opened. The holy fools see the mother of God coming down. The holy fools are the the holy fool Andrew. He's watching this vision and he sees the mother of God coming down with St. John, the forerunner, and St. John, the theologian. We have his icon here somewhere. St. John the Forerunner and St. John the Theologian, they are attending the Mother of God as she comes to them in parousia, in the same way that God comes to us, his most pure mother comes to it, maybe in in almost the same way, comes to us, and she's attended by the two Johns, St. John the Forerunner and St. John the Theologian. And you might say, well, he's a fool after all. Maybe he's also delusional. Did he really see it? Was it a psychological experience? And he turns to, dis- to his disciple Epiphanios and he says, Brother, seest thou the mother of God coming? And Epiphanios says, I see and I be in awe. So they both see. They both see. They both see because, as we've said, God has called them unto himself right? By bypassing the normal means, he gave them foolishness. He gave it to them. It was a gift. He didn't give them worldly wisdom, notice, but he gave them something better, the foolishness of God. So they're enabled to see it. And you have to remember this, that they see it where? In the temple. They have the vision in the temple. I want to keep your attention just for a little bit more. One, if your wisdom separates you from God, then it is foolishness. It is godless, perditious foolishness, and you must repent of it. Two, if you expect to attract the merciful attention of God, as we said last night, do it the way all of the saints have done it. Do it the way we discussed last night. Do it here. Do it in the temple. This is where he comes. This is where he promised to come. That is why we face the east. We're looking for his coming. That is why we elevate the gifts. He's coming from that direction. We're we're offering, we're meeting him in the clouds. Thine own of thine own we offer unto thee. We're meeting him in the clouds. And yet he comes to us mystically in the gifts. And you can't get them elsewhere. You cannot get them elsewhere. This is the feast of the protection. And in this way, the mother of God protects her people. In this way. And I think that we, we, we said it last night, and we'll, we just need to leave with it in our hearts. And I, and I know most of us here, we, we agree on this. The church is the ark of salvation. And the church is physical. The church is circumscribable. Right? It follows. One thing follows from the other. We have to be here. And, and there, everyone can make their own excuses. They can say, oh, Father, I had to do this. I had to do that. I had to do the other thing. Question, who told you you had to? Amen. We hope you found these materials to be spiritually beneficial. 
If you benefit from what you hear and would like to know more about Orthodoxy generally or about genuine Orthodoxy, please don't hesitate to contact me. If you would like to visit us, please check out our website at birthofthebaptistorthodoxchurch.com for the service schedule and contact information. It would be an honor to meet you. Also, keep up with us on Facebook or find me on Instagram at Art of Prayer Workshop, where you can find beautiful, traditional, hand-painted icons, as well as other devotional items for your home chapel or church. If you would like to support us financially, donations can easily be made through PayPal at fellowheirs at hotmail.com. Please remember us in your prayers.